Welcome to Strange Familiars. How are you doing, Tim? I'm doing great. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. It's good to hear. On tonight's show, we're going to be talking with Shane and the Judge from From the Shadows. They are from From the Shadows. I didn't stutter there. Okay. They do the From the Shadows podcast. I was on their podcast a while back, and they had some stories they wanted to share so they came on over to Strange Familiars. Had a great time talking with these guys. The judge tells the story of this creepy entity that was sort of hanging around his very, very young daughter that she was talking to at night. He could hear her on the baby monitor. Oh, see, that freaks me out more than anything because I it's, feel like there's a genuineness with It's a scary story because she's saying it's during the winter and she's saying this thing wants her to go outside and play at, at night. Very, very creepy and... She said his name was Wind. Before we get to our talk with the fellas from From the Shadows, I want to remind everybody that if you like what we're doing and you want to help us continue to make Strange Familiars, you can become a patron at Patreon, patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. All of our patrons get full extra episodes of Strange Familiars. We do two full extra episodes every month. You get bonus content. You help us make the show and you help us keep Strange Familiars happening. Again, it's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. All right, let's go ahead and talk with Shane and the Judge. I'd like to welcome the fellas from From the Shadows podcast to the show, Shane Grove and the Judge. How are you doing tonight, guys? Good. How are you doing, Timothy? Doing well, man. Doing great. I talked with you guys last week, and we had a lot of fun, and I wanted to bring you on Strange Familiars and hear some of your stories, since I told mine, mine on your show. So, in other words, you're really hard up for a guest. Is, <laughs> is, that what, is that what we're saying? <laughs> but it's our pleasure to, to come on and hang out with you, because uh, I personally believe you're, you're one of the most well-researched podcast hosts around. I mean, I every time I listen to one of your shows, it's like a college class. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Hey, hey I only give uh, compliments when they're, when they're deserved. Well, that, that, thank you very much. <laughs> but, but tell my audience, now, I think probably by the time this comes out, I might have already been on your show. We'll see how the timing goes. So maybe my, my audience is familiar with From the Shadows, but tell us a little bit about From the Shadows for anybody who hasn't listened. Well, the uh, so the From the Shadows podcast is a weekly weekly show where we kind of uh, our focus is on the paranormal. Um, we talk to a lot of eyewitnesses that have had Bigfoot experiences, ghost experiences, dogmen, you know, the, runs the gamut from cryptids to haunts to you name it. Yeah. Every now and then we'll have uh, some experts, some other podcast hosts on anybody that we think. Uh, our audience will like. We've had a couple, done a couple episodes on horror movies because uh, we actually have a friend in the in the business as an actor and, and producer and stuff, and and he's drug us kicking and screaming into a couple movie projects, and so we like to have fun with that. And our audience seems to enjoy that. Now we have a different a different style. We kind of keep it conversational, and we have uh, kind of a twisted sense of humor a little bit, you know. Maybe uh, <laughs> we know we've also had like we've also had some of the who's who's in the yeah, industry, like yeah. Linda Godfrey, Nick Redfern, and and those likes. And what's interesting, and I know everybody's seen them on TV and heard them speak, but we get to kind of ask them our own questions and explore, push them to the edges of what their opinions are on things, which I think are pretty cool. Yeah, you, we just don't like to have somebody come on and and, and talk about a book they're promoting. You know, we really kind of want to dig into uh, them personally a little bit and talk to them about their stories and, and kind of, I guess, loosen them up. For better yeah. Term. Yeah. I mean, we just like to have fun because 
we don't like to make we don't make fun of the subject, but we like to have fun talking about the subject because when it comes right down to it, I mean, we're talking about Bigfoot and ghosts and and UFOs, you know, stuff as kids, and I think we're all from pretty much the same time frame growing up, you know. Who could ever imagine that there'd be a forum like this where we could talk to other people in a pretty serious manner about the stuff we could just only, oh, you know, yeah. listen to Leonard Nimoy oh, talk about? Or, or well, Grover and I remember because we went to the same elementary school and couldn't wait for the Scholastic Reader to oh, come yeah. out mm-hmm. where you could order books. And that was the only way you could get uh, ghost stories and cryptids, the mm-hmm. Loch Ness Monster Bigfoot. Because, you know, you go to your school library, you know, you weren't getting any of that stuff. So there was no internet. There, you know, Leonard Nimoy in search of was about the only thing that, that you could get. So, you know, we were as, as used, we were thirsting for yeah, this okay. content. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, it's it's everywhere. So it's it's entertainment, but it's entertainment in a good way. You know what I mean? Where it's like we love to hear the stories. And, and, when, and when we say entertainment, okay, because – we we all know we have a su- super fans out there <laughs> that 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 hang on every word that we say and criticize. We say entertainment. It it's not, not professional ent- wrestling. It's not professional wrestling entertainment, but it is. Um, it's enjoyable to hear. It's the enjoyable stories. to hear the stories. It's enjoyable to make connections with other people who are like minded, and to really feel like because there's a lot of in- instances, and I think you probably. Uh, have run run across this too, where people do, have not told these stories for years and years and years. We're the first people they're opening up to, yeah, and they oh, feel yeah. comfortable. And yeah. and that that kind of leads us to how we started it. And it was right. it was because the judge had an experience when we were teenagers. I was about fifteen. Yeah, when we were teenagers, and it. I mean, I remember when it happened, but I didn't know all the details because he was one became one of those famous eyewitnesses who was afraid to talk about it mm. because and, you would be first of all you wouldn't be believed you'd be yeah. ridiculed made fun of mm-hmm. and it, you know nobody wants that and i don't care whether you're you know, 15 year olds or 50 years old and and that's why we've had people who've come forward after hearing our show say hey look we kind of i guess was inspired by the genesis of your podcast and uh and we want to tell you something that happened to me when i was a teenager also and these are people who are 60 years old so yeah you know and we talk about entertainment. It's one thing like to read a book. Like, you know, I picked up lots and lots of books. And to read the stories is one thing. But to hear it and hear the tenor of someone's voice mm-hmm. as they're retelling the story, that's unmatched. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. one of the things I love about Strange Familiars. It's just powerful that way. It's why I love talking to witnesses. You know, you, you just get it straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had probably... And I hate to you say that sometimes I feel like I say this every couple of weeks when we talk to somebody whose story just blows us away. But I, I had a gentleman on a couple of weeks ago who he got a hold of. I got, I saw his story on Facebook. He had just put it up on Facebook and I just got a hold of him and he called me. Okay. And um, this was a guy that was in the military and was really high up in the military and had an experience 12 years ago, I believe. And I don't remember, I can't remember how much he let out of the bag of what he did in the military, but what he did in the military was stuff that the normal person didn't do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So needless to say he was well-trained at what he did and, uh, you know, probably did a lot of things that will never be, uh, known (laughs) for lack of a better, but he, but he called me up to tell me, a mission he was on and while describing this mission that happened 12 years ago and what happened to him and his two, the guys that were on this mission with him, I mean, you could hear the trembling in his voice, Mm -hmm. the, just the, the tenor of, of how unsure he was like talking about this and what a relief it was to, and, and the funny thing was, is I had gotten invited to the Facebook page that he had put that post on. And I had literally, it was the first post I looked at, saw his story. And he goes, well, what's funny is, is I just got on that Facebook page two days earlier and had sat there and watched enough. And this is what he said, grandma's putting brave enough to put their stories on there that I finally said, 
hey man, you got to quit being a wuss and <laughs> and tell your story. <laughs> and he goes, it must have been fate. So to to have that in the context of that guy experiencing what he experienced with a couple other well trained <laughs> people and just holding on to it for twelve years. I don't care if we talk to an, uh, another person. I mean, just listening to that alone, you know, uh, was. Well, hopefully my story war. has the same effect on him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Well, I, I Maybe. tell you what, my wife started this journey saying, you know, you're all crazy. Like all of us, you know, mm -hmm. all of us. And went to a couple paranormal conventions with me. And, uh, I remember the time where she changed, you know, from what I call like a dishonest skeptic, someone who just is like, no, I don't care. I'm just not going to believe you're all crazy to what I call an honest skeptic, someone who's like, OK, I'm going to look at this in a logical way, but I'm not going to be close minded about it. And it was a guy who came up and told a story and he was he was shaken. He was very upset. And he ended up walking away from the table. My wife turned to me and she said, I don't know what he saw, but he saw something. And I said, that's all I can ask for. That's all, you know what I mean? That, that's mm -hmm. what I call honest skepticism. She's at least willing to acknowledge like, hey, something happened to that guy. And he saw something that wasn't normal, you know, and it wasn't everyday stuff. So these witnesses can change people. You know I mean? Their stories can change people's minds. Well, I will tell you this, the story I'm going to tell you tonight. I tell you what, sometimes I get emotional telling it. And it's, you know, 17, 18 years ago, but it's such a, had such a profound effect on me that sometimes I just get emotional telling it. And, and no matter how many times I tell it, it sticks with me. And hopefully maybe you or some of your listeners can give me some insight as to what really happened uh, to me and my family. Well, I'm very interested in this. Were you interested okay. in, in this kind of stuff like before that? Or, or was that the thing well, that, that got you Well, you interested? know, the thing is, I, I was uh, – you know, like I said, Grover and I, we grew up and uh, I was kind of a monster man. You know what I mean? Loved all the monster shows, you know, the werewolf, Frankenstein, the mummy, creature of the black lagoon, paranormal ghost stuff just really didn't interest me, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And so this situation I had with my daughter is a life changer. And it's a cautionary tale for anybody that has small children. I call it the wind story, W-I-N-D. So I had built a new house out in the country, you know, bought a couple acres from a farmer. So, you know, it wasn't like I moved into a haunted house, you know, built a new house. And it was probably, I was in probably about eight months when my daughter was born, my youngest daughter. And when she was about two and a half years old, pushing three, we had a very specific big time ritual. I would give her a bath and then I would read her a couple books, you know, children's books and I would tuck her in and that was it. Now she was still young enough. We kept a, a baby monitor in her room. It was her routine and she was real good at going to bed, you know, after she got a couple stories and stuff like that. So one night she got tucked in, I left the room and I don't know how long I was gone. And all of a sudden I heard her through the baby monitor talking to someone mm. and she starts calling for me. So I'm thinking, what's going on? So I go in and she tells me that this little boy was bothering her. And at first I thought she was talking about Sunday school or something. She wasn't in preschool yet, like Sunday school. And, and then she says, no, no, he's here in the room. I said, what? Oh yeah. He's over there. She points to the corner. I thought, my gut instinct was that she was stalling. She didn't really want to go to bed. Oh, this yeah, was something yeah. she was, you know, she, she just wanted to tend. She didn't want to go to bed. Right. Figure she could milk a couple more stories out of me or something like that. So I, I didn't think much about it. I, so I kind of played along with her a little bit and I said, Oh, well, what's he wearing? You know? And she says, well, he's wearing a player, pair of blue bibs. Okay. So I go, okay, well, what's his name? Now I'm fully expecting to hear Billy, Bobby, Joey, some, you know, little kid's name, right? And she says, he says his name is Wind. Ooh. And I paused because that struck me very strange. Yeah. 
And I said, well, what does he want? And she says, he wants me to go outside with him and play. Now, mind you, it's winter. And I said, whoa. I said, you wouldn't do that, would you? And she, you know, no, I wouldn't do it. But I could tell by her face that she was distressed. Mm. She was not playful and she was scared. And so I sat there and I talked to her and, and she, you know, when wants me to do this, wants me to do that. I said, well, you'd never know. And we had a home security system. So of course, you know, we put the code in every night and I knew she couldn't reach up and, you know, press the code. So, but I worry, you know, worried she'd go outside, she'd freeze to death. So the very next night, same thing, wind shows up and this goes on for like a week. And each night she's starting to dread going to bed because she's scared that wind is going to show up. Wow. And sure enough, every night wind shows up. She was distressed. She would cry. She, she was scared. It was really weird. And so we were going to this church and, and I knew the pastor pretty well. So I called him up and asked if I could talk to him. I went in and I talked to him and he kind of, you know, soft sells me on it. Well, you know, kids have imaginary friends. I go, dude, this ain't no friend. She's distressed. This is upsetting her. And I mean, he, I was expecting to get a little more support. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it. So kind of, you know, it upset me. And I felt very helpless because there's nothing I can do. This thing is bothering her and I can't make it stop, you know? So finally, after about, I don't know, about two weeks of this, I finally said, look, enough's enough. And I told her mom at the time, I said, look, why don't you take the kids, go to your in-laws in, in another city, which was about an hour away, spend the weekend, I'll stay here, you know, I'll see if wind shows up. No, I couldn't see him, so I don't know what I was thinking, right? Right. But sure enough, Friday night or Friday, they leave. That night around 1030, I get a call from my wife at the time, and wind had showed up there. Oh, Oh, so, so he, he, he followed, followed her. He oh. followed her. Ooh. So now that changes the whole dynamic. Right. So it went from me thinking, well, you know, maybe this was an Indian graveyard and we built this house over it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now this place is haunted to, okay, this is something that, that travels. And it knew where she was. And it was the same thing when she was up there at her grandparents' houses, want her to go outside, want her to go outside and play. And so now I'm really, really frustrated. I'm, and I'm, to be honest, with you, I'm terrified. I'm scared because look, it's one thing, you know, and, and, and I've had a, a cryptid experience that scared the hell out of me, but this is worse because this is something that's messing with your kid. Right. Yeah. I can't see it. I can't control it. I can't protect her. So we started this, her mom started this whole thing. Look, every night when you go to bed, You've got to say this prayer, you know, pray to Jesus to protect you and all this stuff, right? And every night she would do this and wind would continue to show up. And it was heartbreaking. I mean, to hear her little voice praying and asking for protection and not getting it, it was terrifying. It was, I mean, it was like, you talk about an indescribable amount of stress. And I was at wit's end. I, I just didn't know what to do. So one night I had got her to bed, went back downstairs. It was a two story house and I was coming back up the stairs and her bedrooms to the left. And then it's her bathroom and then my bedroom. So there's like in a row. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I got ready to walk into my bedroom, I see out of the corner of my eye, a little boy in blue bibs, blonde hair, walk into my daughter's room. And I just froze. Wow. I froze. Like, I didn't turn and run. And when I say, I just froze. Like, my body, like, locked up. Like, it just locked up. So I had my bedroom door open, and I could hear her through the baby monitor because the baby monitor sat right there and I hear her and she would, she had this kind of every night, she kind of had this mantra of leave me alone. I'm just a little girl. 
you know, I'm not going to go outside with you, you know, this sort of same mantra every night. And then all of a sudden I hear this voice. It was a dialect that I have never heard, couldn't imitate it, couldn't describe it. Like, for example, I can't speak German, but if I heard someone speaking German, I could probably say, oh, I think that's German mm -hmm. or Russian or Japanese or, or Spanish or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But the way these words were being enunciated, to me, it didn't seem like a human being could even say that kind of language. You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't imitate it. Like, I can imitate German or Russian, and it, of course, I wouldn't really be saying the words, right. but yeah, yeah. the accent to right. it. Like, imitate you know. the sound of it. Right, I could. Yeah. This is no way. So, like I said, I just froze. So was I'm, was he speaking like English with an, a weird accent or just totally unknown language? Unknown language, and here's the twist. As I'm listening to it, I realize it's my daughter's voice. It wasn't him speaking. It was her. Whoa. Yeah, now I'm getting emotional telling it. It is one of the most scariest things I've ever – it, it is the scariest thing I've ever experienced. And, and, and I have had – like I said, a, a, what I believe to be a dogman experience, this was 10 times scarier. This wow. is, it was her. Now, the weird thing is she's talking in this language and then like all of a sudden she says, okay. And then there's this big pause and she says, okay. Like she and this thing had reached an accord and <sighs> It was at that point I kind of brought myself out of this and I ran into the room and I said, you know what, you know what happened? And she says, you know, wind's not going to bother me anymore. And she did not know that she was speaking in another language. She had no recollection of that. I asked her what she said. She has no idea what she said. It's like something was speaking through her. Wow. Wow. But the gist was that he wasn't going to bother anymore. So the next night, no wind. The night after that, no wind. And so for the next six months, seven months, no wind. And I'm thinking, holy God, thank you, Lord, right? Yeah. So one day after church, we go with a bunch of people to the Chinese buffet and there was a bunch of people, and they pushed a bunch of tables together. And I always sat with the kids because I wanted to make sure, you know, things went right. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting at the end of the table. And now there's probably four tables pushed together. And I'm sitting at the far end, and my daughter's sitting across from me in a, in a booster seat. And, and then I'm surrounded by little kids on each side, right? And the adults are clear on the other end. And so we're just talking. You know how little kids are in a restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, my daughter whips her head. She whips her head and she looks and she says, Wind, what are you doing here? Whoa. So I say, Did you see wind? And she says, Yeah, but he's not going to bother me. He's, he's not bothering me. Wow. So then I realize this thing's just creeping around. Whatever it is, it's just creeping around. So it was probably... I don't know. It could have been months. It could have been a year. It could have been, I don't know. It, it was, it was several months, maybe a year later. I'm sitting in my office and you know how Yahoo articles pop up. Mm -hmm. I'm looking through the articles and all of a sudden I see this article from Toronto, Canada, where this little boy about my daughter's age was living in this apartment complex, high rise. And in the middle of the night, he gets up in his pajamas walks out the door, takes the elevator down the first floor, walks out into the cold, walks a couple blocks away to some park, sits under a tree and freezes to death. Oh, geez. And the first thing that went through my mind was wind. Yeah, right. That's the first thing that went through my mind is that is exactly what that thing was trying to do to her. It was going to get her outside. It was going to lead her away. And she's going to freeze to death. Now, I'm not saying that wind killed this kid. Okay. Right, right. What I'm saying is it was the same MO. And the weird thing is they interviewed the parents and, and there were security cameras 
The security cameras watched this kid go down the elevator by himself, watch him go out the front door. And the parents were, you know, they're devastated. They said, look, they could not fathom him doing that because he was such a scaredy cat. He would have never done that. I just thought, wind. Mm. So I've told this story to parents who have little kids as a cautionary tale that if your kid tells you that they see something and just because you don't see it, don't chalk this up as their imagination. Don't chalk this up as one of these, you know, oh, it's the invisible friend, it's the imaginary friend, because you don't know what's lurking out there. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, I lived it. I wish and pray to God no one has to live what I went through. Now, the interesting thing is my daughter is now 19 years old. She does not remember any of it. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. So wow. what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. So every now and then I'll get stories that, that have like kind of similar elements that people have told me, but usually it'll be like, maybe they'll hear the voice and their their kids seeing something, but they didn't ever saw the entity. So for you to have seen, right. and, and when you saw it, did it look like physical? Like, like, yeah, it, it looked physical. And now I only saw the back. Mm hmm. So it had been the back of his head. Now, I don't believe it was a little boy. No. <laughs> not for not for a minute. Yeah. So it was probably, I don't know, a year, two years, I don't know, three years. I have no idea how long it was. But the movie, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Are you familiar with a movie called The Fourth Kind? Is that what it's called? The Fourth Kind? So many it's about people. It's like an alien abduction, like an alien abduction movie. Yeah, so many people tell me to watch that, but I'm so triggered by Grey's that I'm just like, nah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm not saying that this was an alien, but the reason why I say that is I'm watching this movie, right? And there's this section of the movie where they had someone had recorded this voice that was speaking and they took it to a linguist or or whatever. And the linguist said that it was Assyrian, which is a language that's not even spoken today. Mm. The reason I bring that up is the language that I heard sounded very similar to that. Interesting. Now I'm not saying my daughter was speaking Assyrian, No. but what I'm saying is, the way that the, the the syllables were enunciated and stuff like that, it sounded very similar. Yeah. To like some sort of ancient language. Did you? At, and I know at the time she was very young and she she might not have even you know been fully you know able to understand everything. But did you ask her about that language at the time? Yeah, she has no recollect. She had no recollection of talking in that language or have any recollection of what she actually said. Mm, wow. Yeah, that is creepy <laughs> wow I, I mean as a dad i'm hearing you tell this i'm just i'm getting chills up my back going oh man oh i'm choked up telling it because it still has that sort of profound effect on me yeah i mean like, it's, it's one of those things that like i said i, I could break down and cry right now telling it sure and, and it's it, been it's one thing you know if if there's a wolf 16 prowling, years ago. if there's a wolf prowling around outside you know you can you can do what you need to do to get rid of it if there's a, right. a creepy human doing, you know, creeping around, it's not anything anybody wants to deal with. But there are ways to to handle that situation. <clears throat> this mm-hmm. situation, it's like, what do you do? You know, you, you're you're almost powerless. You know. You yeah, know? that's the, the you hit the word the you you hit the perfect word. You're powerless. Yeah. And, and you know, and like I said, I, I went to you know went to the pastor of my church, and he you know he soft sells me on it. There just was no one to turn to. And, and let me tell you something, and I'm not making sport of these ghost hunter shows, but calling in some ghost hunter show is not going to resolve the problem. No. First of all, those didn't exist back then. But, right, right. You know, even if they did, I mean, bringing in some guys with some, you know, equipment stuff is not going to do it. Yeah. So what Grover and I have talked about for years, and I've tried to research on my own, and I have drawn a complete blank. I have researched the term wind with demonic spirits, with Indian, Native American lore, and I just hit zero. I mean, nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only thing, you know, that it's quite literally taking the term literally is that, you know, I can think of just the idea that uh, often they say, you know, the wind will blow up, you know, before paranormal accounts, around paranormal accounts, we get the, you know, 
uh, UFOs. Uh, I had a, one in the woods recently where I heard uh, a couple of tree knocks and then the wind just picked right up and then uh, something else creepy happened. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's almost like you like it, it's but the, like, the thing was this thing told my daughter its name was right, me. yeah, exactly. That, but that's the only connection I can make, you know, just off the top of my head. That's what I'm saying. Oh, wow. I mean, I even went so far as to research fallen angels. Mm-hmm. I mean, you name it, I've researched it and drew a blank. Yeah, let's put it this way if I would not have seen it with my own eyes. In the back of my mind, I would still think, well, there's always a chance this was just on her head. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But it was. And then her talking to it in that language, I'm telling you, if you heard that language, it would make your blood run cold. It, it literally, it, it's one of the creepiest things. It probably is the creepiest thing I've ever heard. Wow. And if you don't believe me, look up the movie The Fourth Kind <laughs> to that part and hear that voice <clears throat> and the way it's talking. And then imagine my daughter's talking like that at three years old. Hmm. I'm wondering if, I mean, you know, we don't know it was a Syrian, but I'm wa- I'm wondering if, like, say it was a Syrian. I'm wondering if the wind, whatever the translation, wind into a Syrian is a, a common name or something. You know, don't know. Yeah, one person suggested it could be angelic speech, like uh, no- Enochian stuff. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no mm. idea. Yeah, what do they call it? Um, barbarous language associated with, you know, occult practice and so forth was, uh, almost, uh, almost like speaking in tongues, but for, for occultists. Um, Mm -hmm. so you now I actually looked at like YouTube videos of people speaking in tongues, Mm -hmm. not even close, Mm -hmm. not even close. Good. So I got you stumped, don't I? Well, (laughs) it's, I'm completely fascinated because I love, I love the like, the audio component to the stuff, and I mean the visual stuff's incredible too. But but whenever there's like a like a, a component like that, like the Sierra sounds, I'm just enthralled by them because mm-hmm. just like oh man, they, you know, it's so incredibly interesting. So when anything like that comes up, that tends to be where my focus goes. It's like oh, I want to know, but of course, you know, there's no way to know. I mean, you know, it's like right. go, go back in time and record that for me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It would be nice if I could. Well, yeah. because it's, it's much easier to trick your eye than it is your ear. Right. And, you know, so to, that you heard that. And, and it wasn't like she just said like a couple words. This went on. Like it was a, I mean, it was almost like she was standing on stage and was doing, you know, an aside or something. Right. And you're and, hearing, so you're essentially hearing a conversation between two right. entities, but just both in your daughter's voice. Well, like, I never heard wind respond. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I had only heard her speaking in that language and then she breaks into english and says okay wow yeah that's intense well i i can only say i'm glad it sort of resolved itself shocking that so i mean usually you know and then usually prayers do help um so it's it's shocking almost that 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 didn't help i guess if you had to- talked to me at the time i would have said for you to ask her to just firmly tell it to go away, to say, you know, go away, leave me alone. You're scaring me. And oh, she pre- was doing all that stuff. Oh, was she doing that anyway? Okay. She was doing it all. Mm. Look, man, I'm telling you, we, we just exhausted ourselves with things to say and do. Mm-hmm. And nothing worked until she used that language. Wow. And yeah. the weird thing is, like I said, she runs into it six months later at the Chinese restaurant. And it's just creeping around. Oh, okay. So, so I was thinking of it. So you were thinking maybe, okay. I thought like she was having both sides of the conversation. He was speaking through her and that's the language no. you're hearing. You're thinking no. that she was talking that to she, him. And oh, he was okay. talking to him in that language. Like she was scolding him gotcha. in this language. Gotcha. And then waiting for him to, <laughs> then Wait. waiting for him to respond. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different spin. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, it was not him talking through her, this was her, and it was a aggressive. You'd have to hear it, man. It's just one of the creepiest ass things you'd ever hear. Wow. Actually, Timothy, well, I in that hope case, you maybe it was some kind of like, it. maybe it was some kind of inspire, you know, divine inspired tongue or something. You know, I don't know. You know, maybe whatever. No finally idea. Worked. Wow, that is. Interesting. But like I said, six months later, she sees it at, at the Chinese restaurant, and it boogied away like it. Hmm. 
Well, let's be honest. That Chinese restaurant was very sketchy. <laughs> it has been closed down a couple times <laughs> for health care but, but literally, it was like, you know, it, it didn't know she was there. It, it could have been following another kid, stalking another kid, runs into her, and it was like, you know, Oh, I got to believe it knew she was there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got to believe. I don't know. But it's just, to this day, I, I think this thing is still out there. It's still creeping around. And it's still trying to get little kids to go outside and play in the in the winter. Wow. Yeah, I've... well, you almost got to believe it's one of those entities that's been around since the dawn of time. Yeah, and, and I mean. Just, and that's probably what it does. I mean, not knowing anything. That's just probably. Well, I would love if you have, and I know you have a lot of listeners out there. If anybody can give me any insight on this, oh, I'd yeah. love for somebody to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, cause yeah. I've spent years researching it and I've just dead end after dead end after dead end. Yeah. I'll be interested too. Cause sometimes I've actually quite often people will uh, reach out with thoughts that are pretty interesting. So we'll see what the Strange Familiar's Brain Trust comes up with. I'm definitely interested to see what they come up with myself because, wow, that's an intense one. I am... A little different than I think I saw a Bigfoot outside my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's settled in a you know positive manner. I'm, I'm kind of glad your daughter doesn't even remember it. Maybe that's for the best. Yeah. Glad you didn't come back again. Man. Well, I, I mean... There's still time, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. But I don't think he's interested in, in 19-year-old kids. Right, yeah. Yeah, which is even creepier. It's, it's always creepy when this stuff pops up around kids, you know. Well, clearly, it's MO was to get her outside in the cold and mm-hmm. probably lure her away Pied Piper style and yeah. you know, have her die. Wow. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I did not sleep well. I mean, even after... Cause these things were like he came every night and would pester her for 45 minutes to an hour and then he would leave or so we thought I don't know Mm -hmm. but she would eventually fall asleep and then let me tell you something I just laid in bed constantly wondering is she going to get up out of bed and go outside oh yeah I would have been the same way yeah you have no idea the, the amount of words can't describe the amount of terror and stress that I was under. It mm-hmm. just it's can't words can't be it can't do it justice. And if there's anybody out there that, that ever experiences this, they'll they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. What will be really interesting is every now and then we'll get somebody on that will tell a story, and then I'll get somebody else who says oh, the same thing happened to me. So that that would be most interesting if that happens. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That. Yeah. You've only told the story a couple times. Yeah, I haven't told the story that often. Yeah. In it, because most people, you know, they want to hear the the cryptid story over the over the, this story, but this is this story is way scarier for me. Oh yeah, like I said, as a dad, absolutely. Like I would have probably slept in front of the front door or something, you know. Oh, you. I mean, you, you have no idea. You have no idea the stuff that the precautions that we went through to make sure that she did not go outside. Mm. Because we were terrified. Yeah. I mean, oh, we were terrified that he would put a spell on her and she would be in a trance. And I mean, it, it, trust me, you, you, the things that you come up with in your head. And that's before we had a podcast. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's before and, and, we had a podcast. And heard all kinds of, heard all all kinds kinds of crazy, of crazy, yeah. crazy stories, you know. So. I mean, we put, we had the alarm system, but we stacked chairs against it. I mean, we, we created roadblocks so that she could not get out, physically get out the door. Right. And then yeah. I'm like, well, what if wind just moves all this stuff? You know what I mean? It's just your your mind, it just it's, it was torturous. I can only imagine. Yeah, that's an intense one. I was I didn't know where that was going, but wow. No, as a dad, again, I say nope. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I did yeah. not have to deal with that. So that story that he had, and, and, and you know, he's alluded to a couple times of a you know a cryptid encounter that 
he had when we were teenagers. Mm-hmm. That's kind of why we started the podcast because the crypto story, I think Wes had, no, Wes had you on after we'd already started. Yeah, we'd already started. But I think he, he was on, um, the judge was on with like Shane LeGro and somebody else. Yep, Shane into the fray. Because, because he, you know, I mean, long story short, he thought he thought he had a dog man encounter. And so once he went on those shows, we kind of, we, you know, we kind of talked. I was like, you know what? We've always loved talking about this stuff. And maybe there's more people out there. Because at that point, I hadn't even listened to a podcast. When you no, know. we, we, we kind of just kind of, I went on Shannon LeGro's. Um, actually, I went on um, Brenton Sawin. Okay, yeah. God rest his soul. He, he passed away a few oh, years ago. Oh, did he? I did not know that. Yeah, he passed away. I, that was the first time I ever told my story on a podcast. That's really the first podcast I really listened to. And uh, I told the story there, and from there I was on Shannon LaGrose into the fray. And then we kicked around trying to do this, and we started doing it. And then uh, West, I, I was on Wes. And, yeah, and... And you know, once wet, you know, once you do something with Wes, then it's it's a you know full go. That well, when I went on, on <laughs> yeah, well, when when I went on Brenton's, it was really kind of a therapeutic thing to tell the story, the dog man story, and it was therapeutic and was also liberating at the same time that I could, I felt like I could tell the story, and I knew people were going to listen and not be judgmental. Yeah, and not like, like I tell the story of my brother. He just, oh, you're just full of, you know. <laughs> I mean, he'll never believe it. I don't care what happened. Now, the interesting thing is, and it, and it kind of ties back into the wind story, hoping that some of your listeners will maybe have the same experiences. Is when you told that story on Shannon's show, actually one or two people emailed, yeah, the show. So we live in a real rural, rural part of Ohio. Okay, it's we're about an hour north of Columbus, small town, and we have lived here our whole lives, other than going off to college, right? Come back. So when he told that story to on Shannon, show, and she's a Las Vegas based show, but with national, yeah, you know, yeah. So somebody actually sent an email who, in the same time frame that the judge had his run in, somebody like a half mile away yeah. out in the country in this same little neighborhood where there's probably only 20, 20. Well, as the crow flies, it's probably not that far. Yeah, but didn't have a sighting, but had an experience that they felt was supernatural or paranormal in the same time period, which kind of... And when she heard my dog man stories, like, oh my gosh, like it clicked like clicked to this was what was probably creeping around my house. And then once we started doing the podcast and we, and you know, so one of our people we really wanted to talk to is Linda Godfrey because of the judge's dog man experience. She's the godmother of dog man. (laughs) It, and so when we were, you know, we were just looking forward to talking to her and getting some more insight. And at the end of the conversation, she kind of dropped the bomb on us and said, she'd been doing a bunch of research up on, on Bray road and just finally decided to lay a map of Indian burial mounds over top of that area where she had her dog all these dog men sites right? and they eerily matched, matched up. up okay so she had come to the conclusion she told us that she felt there was a correlation between indian burial mounds and dog man sightings so lo and behold you know it just blew the judge's mind kind of blew my mind and so one day he decides he's going to do the same thing Okay, and he looks up Indian burial mounds in Ohio, and I'm out because my day job is I'm out, I'm out, I'm a mailman delivering mail, and I'm walking up and down the street, and here he calls me, and he goes, he had sent me a text, and you know I'm busy working, I'm I'm really working hard delivering the mail, <laughs> so so I shouldn't be looking at my phone, but I am. Right. Anyway, he sends me this map, and it shows within 200 yards. Of where I first experienced this, this is the, dog man. There's two Indian burial mounds back in these farmers' fields. Oh wow! One is near where he first had his experience, and then one is in the field between where the lady who rode in f- to Shannon's show and where the judge has had his experience. So there's two. We have lived in that area for forty plus years. Yeah. Went to elementary school within a mile. 
yeah. of all this. Had no idea there was Indian burial mounds there. Huh. And it just blew us away. That in and of itself has been a truly a blessing just to just yeah. do the show to learn that stuff. And, right. Because you never know. Uh, you never know what you're going to uh, what you're going to find out, you know. And it kind of opens your eyes to take a closer look around to your area, yeah, right, um, and and see what's out there. Because I and I know you do all that. You do a lot of research around where you're at in Pennsylvania, and have come up with tons of you know folklore stuff and and newspaper clippings on old stories. And you know we're not quite as adept at. No, so I, I wish I say we're way amateurs compared to you God, um you don't have to say that. thank you <laughs> but but i mean it's just the truth like so we we admire like the what you do because just the discovery that you have must be every day you must really surprise yourself in one way or another with something that you learn well yeah, and you know the yeah. thing about it is about research is there's something just that moment when you discover something and you're able to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and that was when we were talking to Linda and we started connecting dots like, Oh my gosh, like something that, I mean, never, ever, ever thought to, to connect and mm -hmm. exciting. But yeah, the, the, the dog man experience was a, uh, it's uh, a, <laughs> and we and, and now we're skirting like we we kind of talk about we're skirting around really going into detail about the dog man because yeah you kind of teasing the, a little bit <laughs> we're teasing, teasing a little bit we're teasing a little bit because now real diehards of Sasquatch Chronicles that listen they'll probably remember the story right. but in July early July we were part coming out by Seth Breedlove is it's called American Werewolves right and they actually came and and talk to the judge and film some stuff around here. So it's kind of a, it's going to be kind of an interesting, and they talked to one of our, another guest we had on that hadn't told her dog man story mm -hmm. in 50 years. And it was even more frightening than the yeah. judges. Yeah. And, um, I think, uh, Seth and those guys went down and did an investigation that land between the lakes, mm -hmm. uh, Ooh. that story. So, and I'm excited to see that Yeah. for my, you know, I, you know, he hasn't, they haven't given us any teasers on it. Or no, they, they sent me a, a still from it. Yes. So we're ex just as excited as... Um, I mean, I'm mean, i not excited to see myself on camera. <laughs> I am not excited to see myself on camera at all. But I did... So so that's coming out in July, so we hope everybody goes out and checks it out because uh, Seth does some really good stuff. And um, Right. Um, well, yeah. Seth takes a very professional approach to all these documentaries i mean he doesn't come at it as a diehard true believer no. or anything like that it, it is more of an investigatory tale of what he has found what he's discovered and he leaves it up to you the listener to decide what you want to believe so they're good but i but so i wanted to share with you now my story is not anywhere near as good as the wind but i wanted to share a um uh, Bigfoot. I, well, I guess I shouldn't even call it a Bigfoot story. I don't know what it is, but I think it kind of, I think you will appreciate it from your approach to the subject. And I am not, a re, I'm not much of a researcher. I'm more of a Bigfoot enthusiast. And these guys involved in the podcast always, you know, hey, let's go, let's go out in the woods. Let's go to haunted houses. Let's do I don't really want to do that. I'd like to hear other people tell me about their experiences. But we have some friends that do an, do another podcast called The Paranormal Road. And they camp in a campground outside of Oberlin, Ohio, which is for people who don't know Ohio that well. It's near Cleveland. And this campground sits on uh, – there's a big metro park system that goes through Cleveland and a river – it comes through. And so there's woods along this road. So it's all connected. Well, then it connects to the National Park. Does it connect to the National it, Park? It eventually hooks up with Cuyahoga National Cuyahoga Park. Cuyahoga National Park. Okay. So there's, Which is enormous. So you think Cleveland, and you don't necessarily think there's this huge metro park area. But it is. It's, it's huge. So these guys have been in this campground, um, the guys from the Paranormal Road, and had sent me audio and because they're more into ghosts. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. they're like psychic mediums and do ghost investigations and they didn't really they weren't really into the Bigfoot or the dogman stuff. 
So they sent me these, they, they kept hearing sound. And finally, out in the woods surrounding the camp, they like, were hearing something make noises, scream, howl, and it was waking people up. There was more than, you know, just two of them hearing this stuff. So it really kind of shook them up. They had no idea what was going on in the woods. And so, of course, they found noises similar to the Sierra sounds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it kind of freaked everybody out that had heard this, like, is that a Bigfoot out? Is there, there's a Bigfoot in the woods? You know, they nobody wanted to go out looking for it. And so the camp, the lady who owned the campground, told him, you guys need to shut up about, shut up about that. I don't want to hear that. You know, she doesn't want to. Well, it turned out that in that winter, her and her granddaughter were driving back home and had one cross, had a Bigfoot cross in front of the road. Mm-hmm. So now she's faced with, I mean, the granddaughter's like, oh my God, you know, there it is, grandma. And they watched it cross the road and go down this lane, you know, into the, into the woods. So now she knows, and she tells those guys, like, look, I saw it. My granddaughter saw it. So the guys from the paranormal road thought it would be a great idea for us to come up to the campground. And this was back in 2020, right? I think it was right after the COVID restrictions had just kind of started. Um, It was in July. They wanted us to come up. So I don't know if you know Amy Boo, but Amy Boo is a – Ohio native and she's a a Bigfoot researcher here in Ohio and she was friends with them. She's part of, she does some stuff with the Olympic project out in Washington. And so she was going to go and we were going to go and do like kind of a live podcast episode and interview some of the people from the, from the campground. And uh, so it was fun. It was super hot, you know, but the idea was, is that Amy Boo, who's a Bigfoot researcher, is going to take us out to the woods. And we're like, okay, there's like 13 of us going. Yeah. Okay, so not what you would consider prime Bigfoot expedition. Right, because you have you have a, a couple of guys that had a few too many libations. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, we had some cackling girls. And, yeah. and, and to be honest with you, the only reason why I went was because of that very reason, that I thought there is absolutely no there's way. There's no way. Because first of all, I'm one of these guys that says, I cannot for the life of me understand why people go out in the woods at night looking for Bigfoot if they actually believe it's real. (laughs) Because let me ask you this. If I told you, hey, there's a silverback gorilla that's in this woods, at least we think there are, I want you to go out at night and see if you can run into him. (laughs) Would you do it? No, you wouldn't. Let me just shrink it down. A chimpanzee. (laughs) <laughs> would you go off the ch- no a chimpanzee would rip your face off if I told you look there's probably you know a decent you know three or four wolves out there family you wouldn't do it so why if you actually believe that Bigfoot's real would you ever want to go out a super predator I mean an apex predator would you want to go out there and trample around in the woods at night with the hope that you're going to yeah, I don't even deliver mail to a house if a poodle's barking. Too. Yeah, so it's, yeah, that's I, a big I, question, and yet I do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but people people do it, and and then they're making sounds. I'm like, you don't know what you're saying. Could be a mating call. Bigfoot shows up, has his way. Yeah, with you. now that I don't do. <laughs> that I don't do. You know, or it could be it, suppose it's a challenge. You're challenging for his territory. He shows it, rips your face off. So the moral of the story was the only reason I even (laughs) went on this ill-fated trip was because I knew there's a bunch of people, and I thought, if if there's any wildlife out there, it's going to scatter because these people are are (laughs) way too loud and way too obnoxious. Mm -hmm. So so, so we head out into the woods with a couple couple guys leading the way that had apparently never been in the woods. Okay. (laughs) I don't know how they got. I about lost it. my temper with him. <laughs> but Amy actually, there was a couple, couple like uh, infrared. Yep. So there was a couple infrared cameras, and somebody was video. I think videoing with a with yep. some night vision or something. Yep. So we had some cool equipment out there, and I think Amy, you know, Amy is a, is pretty serious about doing this, but she, you know, she she likes to have a little bit of fun, and and she kind of I think felt the same way we did. So we get out into this section of the woods, and we had never been in there. It's night. Uh, like I said, it's middle of July, so it was probably 90 degrees. We're just sweating. Oh, it was awful. It was terrible. 
And the guys that are supposed to be leading us kind of disappear. Like they're nowhere around. Okay. We don't see them. So Amy kind of says, Hey, let's just kind of stand here for a second and just be quiet. Well, she said, let's just kind of stand here and let's see if those guys find us. Right. Well, in the meantime, She's holding one of these infrared or these uh, night vision or infrared, thing, and and the battery goes dead. Mm-hmm. And it was freshly charged. It's freshly charged. Yeah. And we've been we've been out in the woods maybe ten minutes. Yep. Okay. So we're standing there. So now she's like, "Hmm, that's weird." And so as I'm standing there beside her, I kind of look out into the woods, and I don't keep in mind I have no idea past thirty, forty, fifty feet or whatever. What the, the ter- topography? Yeah, what the terrain is, and I see this red light. Okay, that at first I'm thinking, is that a tail light? Am I looking like through the woods to a farm? Am I seeing a tail light? Well, then another red light shows up beside it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm sitting there and I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think of all the things this could be rather than just go ahead and say it looks like a couple of red eyeballs. Okay. I kind of nudge Amy and I go, Amy, do you see those two red lights? And she looks up and she goes, yes, I do. And the minute she, or the second, cause it was just seconds. She says, yes, I do. Boom. They blink out. Hmm. So now Amy's like, okay, let's kind of spread out a little bit. Cause she has no idea what this woods is like. She's never been in it. She has no idea what we're, what we were looking towards. Okay. And I'm still thinking, I, I, I got to walk that way. I have to see, I'm like, is there, is there reflectors on the trees? But then I'm like, well, why would the reflectors have light? Nobody was shining light on them. I thought that those guys that disappeared have red lights on their hats or something, you know, mm-hmm. there, there had to be something we, I thought. And these guys finally come back like they come back as those lights go out so they're in between where those lights were i we could i could determine that so these guys come back and and we kind of like okay let's turn around let's see what you they didn't have any red lights so now amy being the seasoned researcher is kind of like okay something's going on here we need to be quiet we need to spread out a little bit And let's just listen because I don't know what's going on. So I walk up away from the, in the front of the group to try to see if I can figure out if, if I was looking through the woods, well, I get so far and the, and the wood, the ground of the woods goes up into a hill. So I would have been looking straight into like the middle of a hill. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been looking over top of it. So I, so I just stop because I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And we're, everybody just kind of stands there. And as I'm standing there, a only, the only way I can describe it is a stream of cold wind just came and like, like, I don't want to say through me, but around me. Wind with a small W. Yes, not the wind that was right, right. You know, <laughs> but it was just like a like I was standing in a like a wind like a windstorm, okay, and it just went through me. And there was another guy standing up there near me, and I said, "Did you feel that?" And he goes, "Yes, I did." We're in the middle of the woods. Like I said, it was probably ninety degrees. There was no breeze. We're all. I mean, I'm sweating right. so bad I had to take my ball cap off. And here's this cold breeze just coming through the woods. And we're in the middle, and we're basically in the middle of this section of woods. And so I just go back to Amy, and I go, Amy, this is what just happened. And she goes, I think it's time we get out of the woods. And the odd thing is, I'm kind of impervious to heat. (laughs) I I grew up in a 110-year-old farmhouse, never had air conditioning until I was in, in graduate school impervious to heat and I just felt sick I mean I felt sick I, I felt anxiety like I had to get out of this woods like I was start, and I don't get anxiety okay I don't have panic attacks and like that and I started feeling nauseous like I had to get out of there and the weird thing is I was standing with Amy's guy friend 
and I smell like the only way to describe this when I was a kid, me and my dad and my brother went and caught a bunch of catfish. And I don't know why we brought them home, but my dad ended up throwing them in the field next door. And my beagle got out, and he rolled in them. Oh. And when he came back into the house, <laughs> the smell of him rolling them rotten catfish, that's what I smelled. Like, just rotten. Like, what the hell is this? And it was there for just, like, a few moments, and it was gone. Hmm. We end up you know, getting out of there and... And then Amy and I just discussed it a couple days later. And what was weird was, is I hadn't listened to that Friday's episode of the Sasquatch Chronicles. And when I listened to it then the next week, it was the first episode I had heard where he had a guest on that was talking about seeing red eyes out in the woods. And I'm just like, what the heck is that? You know, and I like kind of said something to Amy. She said, you know, it wasn't anything she was really familiar with. So I, I just couldn't, I couldn't say, hey, look, we saw Bigfoot. Right. All I can say is some equipment malfunctioned. We saw, Amy and I saw these red lights. And I mean, it, she's way more experienced in the woods than I am. Okay. So that's why her seeing, you know, seeing it too. And then that cold breeze mm -hmm. or that cold gush went to me, that was almost more of a paranormal experience than it was a Bigfoot experience. It was kind of a totality of the circumstances. You know I mean, no one yeah. certain thing yeah. would yeah, say, exactly. Oh yeah, this is something paranormal. But when you just start adding mm -hmm. everything up and you start like the equipment malfunctioning, like how many times have we heard that? You know, well, we went out there, the battery was fully charged, oh, and lo yeah. and behold, drain the battery. And then, you know, smells, and then the wind, and the uh, it just was weird. It just... Yeah. And then in the meantime, then maybe the next summer, uh, the guys from the podcast and their kid, and other people from the campground then reported seeing those same kind of red, and I hate to say eyes, mm -hmm. okay, but there's no other... I'm just saying that for a frame of reference because that's about what they just came to mind. That's what they were. But there's probably been eight other people since that have seen those uh, from the campground or from in the woods because they did take another small group, like four or five, where, I'll never where go again. three or four of them saw that. And yeah, and they've been asking us to come back up again. Absolutely and I, not. <laughs> I'm kind of reluctant because... I think I pressed my luck the first time. Because like I said, I'm not. We're not field researchers. Yeah, we're not field researchers we're, at all. We're, we're behind the camera or microphone people. We're not. But when I hear then more stories that have similar aspects and then, you know, talking to you last week and how you think there is, there's a real correlation between, you know, what people have experienced paranormal wise in one setting, why isn't paranormal in another setting? Yeah. You yeah. know? Well, and, yeah, like I said, all that stuff you described, you put that inside a house, that's a poltergeist. Yeah. But out in the woods, uh, it's, it's, it's Bigfoot, you know? Just some thoughts real quick. Uh, number one, when you, like the battery's dying, silverback gorillas don't kill your batteries. That's probably the reason I'm out there at night. <laughs> because uh, They just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a silverback. Uh, the secondarily red eyes, if it's eye glow, then we're talking about something that's, you know, unlike anything else. If it's self-illuminating eyes, that's, but it, let's say it was eye shine and, and you, you know, it was reflecting from some source that you weren't aware of. As far as I know, and I'm, you know, I'm not a biologist, but I've done some research on it. The only thing that's big, uh, that can have red eye shine on, in our area would be a bear. So you're talking either a bear or something else, you know, because uh, coyote don't have red eye shine. Um, deer don't have red eye shine. So whatever you saw was, was either possibly a bear, and usually black bear don't have red eye shine, but I, I think they can depending on their diet. So and black bears would be very, very, very rare yeah, in this yeah. area. Uh, here too, here too. But, you know, so I, I've seen something that sounds similar. I don't know exactly what you saw, but I've seen, you know, something that was uh, red eyes, appeared to be red eyes in the woods. So I looked it up, you know, I'm like, well, what can have red eye shine? And it's, you know, little things can, little rats and stuff. But uh, I'm assuming it was like way too big to be that. 
But it was self-illuminating, right? There was no. I listen. I've got to assume it was because. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, um, well, that's I, the other I walked thing. up there, and the only thing I the, – the first thing I thought was taillights, mm-hmm. okay? The second thing I thought was that maybe somebody had put reflectors on trees and that those guys that disappeared from us were shining their lights on these reflectors. But I didn't see the, I didn't see the lights shining on them. Nobody really had flashlights. But those guys had headlamps. Oh, but, right. but, you could, but you would – I mean, you would know that – you would have seen their headlamps. Yeah, I didn't moving. see that. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until they started walking back towards us. And then once, like I said, I saw the lay of the land and saw that it was a hill. I'm like, okay, you know. But I'm not going to jump to a conclusion and right. say because I don't know. All I know is what really what I what we saw and experienced out there. Is it all tied together? I mean, you've got to think that some of it may be tied together, but maybe it's not, and we're just really lucky. To be out there and experience <laughs> three or four different things. So and I was maybe uh, there's just so many weird coincidences occurring at the same place and time mm-hmm. that it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts to become a little too much coincidence. I was on uh, winter solstice not this past year, not the year before, so the year before that. So what would that be? Twenty nineteen, something like that. We decided to take a, a night hike. My research buddy and I, Chad, we decided to go to this place called White Rocks Trail, which is a kind of a side trail to the Appalachian Trail here in Pennsylvania. And it's about a mile or two that you hike up this mountain, you get on top of this ridge, and then you, you go up to the Appalachian Trail. And it's about 14 degrees. Uh, we're hiking. We get on top of this ridge. We get up to the, the AT, turn around, and head back. It's kind of it's an out-and-back thing. We're coming back, and, and I look over, and I see one red light in the woods. And it's exactly like you described. It looked like a tail light. I'm looking at it, and I, I said, Chad, look at that. And then as he looks at it, we're both looking at it now. Another one lights up right beside it, just like you described. And Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it looked like eyes. Like, you know, before that, it was just, you know, one weird light. And all of a sudden, boop, there's another red light right next to it. And it's just like, oh. And this this trail, you can't get it. It's so rocky and it's so dangerous that it was just, I just was resigned. I was like, okay, whatever happens, happens. Because I'm going to break my leg if I try to get down. You've just this. perfectly described why we don't do field research. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, Chad looks back. We decide, like, okay, enough. So now, and this, by the way, is right at midnight. It's like right at midnight, we hit the this area. You know, we see the light. At some point, I'm ahead of Chad a little bit. We're making our way back across the ridge to go down the mountain. And I just hear him say, okay, um, I want you to, as safely as you can, but as fast as you can, move along. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, do you want to tell me something? He's like, nah, not yet. And we get to the bottom of the mountain. Finally, everything was fine. He's like, yeah, those lights moved right up behind us on the ridge. They moved closer. So... That was, uh, and he denied letting you know that so you could turn around and see for yourself. I think he didn't want to upset me. I think he just, he was, well, I think he figured if you panicked and started to run, that you could have, you know, wiped out, injured yeah. yourself, and then you're caught versus, yeah. hey, we're going to just move nice and smooth. Yeah. He's, he's, did a, you guys carry, do you guys carry any firearms with you? I carry a wizard staff that's covered with protection symbols, which has done me more good than any firearm could ever do. No, uh, Ch- I, Chad does, I believe. <laughs> I don't. I am protected. Okay. I was buying the wizard staff for a second there. I thought. No, I do. I, had... I literally do. Oh, like, oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Like when, when I got attacked by a, a, the rabid raccoon, which is a whole other story. My listeners have heard it. Um, I got to be honest. There's a big difference between like a Sasquatch and a raccoon. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but, uh, this thing, I don't think I could have pulled a handgun and shot this thing in time. Now, I'm right. not saying I'm, I'm a warrior with the staff or anything. I got lucky when I, I broke the things back before it got to me, but I honestly, it came so quickly. I don't think I could have pulled a handgun and aim. Now somebody could, I'm sure there are people with enough training they could, but, but I'm not that guy. They're at Quantico, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm very confident that I can take care of myself with that uh but uh yeah chad, i believe chad does carry a, a sidearm now back then he didn't though so there you go yeah i gotta be honest yeah and, and i'm not gonna give away my dog man story but <laughs> i i was also unarmed 
Uh, but I'm not really sure. But you know, you hear these stories, and I've seen them on TV, and I've heard other people who have come face to face with something and had a firearm and dropped the firearm and ran. Oh yeah. Just yeah. dropped it and ran. They just figured, you know what? I'm I'm just going to make it mad, mm-hmm. or I'm going to miss it, and it's going to be on me. It's like the scene in um, Blazing Saddle. Saddles, don't, don't take the gun. You're just going to make it. You're shooting. You're only going to make you You're mad. only going to make you mad. Yeah. Yeah. With Mungo. 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 <laughs> you're only going to. You're only going to make you mad. Yeah, I yeah, mean, and, and there's some interesting Rougarou stories like that where people have been out in the swamp hunting and. They come across this thing, and they, you know they got a twenty-two rifle. They're shooting deers and squirrels and whatnot, and they're just like, drop the rifle and run. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, there's a number of stories of people shooting Bigfoot where it either doesn't react or uh, it reacts poorly, <laughs> and you know, either way, you're you're kind of screwed there. So, and and the ones that you know are close to people's home when they they just follow them home and then harass them for then on, they just that, that's a whole other problem. So. I would advise. Whoever people, had a girlfriend like that. Yeah, it's that. I had a couple I, I, girlfriends. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'd advise people, uh, whenever possible, do not engage in violence with this stuff. Try to avoid it. That's probably good advice. Yeah. Well, where can we find from the shadows? Um, well, obviously, you can find our podcast everywhere. Um, you know, we have a YouTube channel too. That's kind of getting. Uh, back up to speed uh some of our loyal fans they they know our jason our super producer was under the weather for a couple months almost died so we kind of got behind on getting stuff up on youtube but we're catching up with that but you can catch us on any of the pod catchers you can find us on facebook we've got the from the shadows podcast page and then our forum is called after the shadows so you can that's where a lot of people get on and comment and um and then if anybody wants to like talk directly to me and then I can get a hold of the judge. The easiest way to find me is on Instagram at Shane Grove author or through our from the shadows podcast page on Instagram, mm-hmm. or just go to our website from the shadows podcast and, and hit the contact. Awesome. Button. Those are all the easiest ways to get a hold of us. You guys drop shows every week, right? Every week we do a, we do a paranormal show on Friday and then every Wednesday we do something called the midweek howl, which has Nothing paranormal on it, but we have a, a, a gentleman on there who uh, has an extent had an extensive career in law enforcement to a homeland security to air marshal, and he's lives in the Ozarks. But he's one of the funniest dudes. He oh, tells he, the hilarious f- tales from his professional experience. From his professional experience, it just you know everyday stuff we talk about, and uh, so on Wednesdays we kind of we kind of do like a a half hour of just Midwest humor kind of thing. It's totally different than the paranormal, but we have have a lot of diehard fans of the. Uh, we call him the Ozark Howler. We can't give away his name because of some of his stories. But but uh, <laughs> but you just gotta listen to it. He has one of those fantastic storytelling voices. Yeah, yeah. And so we, yeah, it's kind of a, it's totally different uh, than the paranormal aspect because he's not even a, he's not a believer. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to, him to be part of the show in some way, and it turned out to be a whole other thing. He was the the skeptic amongst us. Yeah, he was the skeptic, but That's... he's so skeptical that we couldn't even have him on the show. Have him on the show. <laughs> we <laughs> had to just give you thirty minutes of him telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Shane and the Judge. Do, do you, is it always the Judge, or do, can it be Judge sometimes? It's just uh, you, you look. You can call me either one. <laughs> <laughs> just don't call me late for dinner. Right on. <laughs> Shane and the judge from From the Shadows. Thanks so much for telling your stories. Great stories, guys. Keep in touch. We'll have you back on. And maybe you can tell that Dogman story after sure. sh- after Seth's <laughs> movie comes out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like I said, anybody out there, your listeners, that, that can explain the wind, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear people's ideas. Like I said, I definitely appreciate the work that you do. And, and, and I know how tough it is to put out a podcast uh, weekly, twice a week on your Patreon. I mean, it's just content, content, content. But we do it because we love it and we love Absolutely. the fans. So I appreciate what you do and how well researched you are. And and I've told the judge because he's an avid reader that a couple of your books are the uh, the end all to be all when it comes to uh, Bigfoot research. I think so. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. We'll stay in touch. Hey, thank awesome. You. Thank you thank again you for having us.
Tim, if you had a relationship-based approach to helping you and your puppy become perfect for each other, what would you call it? Well, I think 90 days to the perfect puppy is already taken. But that's a good one, right? That's a great one. Yeah. Let's just talk about that instead. Okay. Because I don't have one. (laughs) Yeah. For people who may not be aware, if you have puppy problems, this is the place to go. If you have problems with fear and nervousness, I mean, I have those problems, but if your puppy was having them, (laughs) along with barking and chewing and destruction of furniture and shoes or crate training or hyperactivity. 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy can help you with all these problems and more, whatever your puppy problems are. They have video lessons, a secret Facebook group, one-on-one options are available, and this all is at sithappens.us. Look for the 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy link so you can understand how your dog thinks, and apply proactive training methods to help you and your puppy become perfect for each other. Again, that's sithappens.us. Look for the 90 days to the perfect puppy link at the top of the page. Back to the uranium glass. You know, I was just listening to one of my favorite non-paranormal but sounds paranormal podcast called the mothball prophecies today which is, which is a great name that's a fantastic name yeah. right if you haven't heard of them they basically talk about reselling and vintage and stuff like that and interview people so i listened to it for that but um they were talking today about poisons and other things that are harmful in the world of antiques mm-hmm. and they talked about uranium glass but thankfully their research showed as well that it's a very low level akin to a microwave of radioactivity okay. involved in it. So because I was like, oh, am I going to have to like just sell all of this really quickly <laughs> or not stand near it too often? This room is filled with, I mean, not just uranium glass, but other glow in the dark stuff. So if that's the, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a pounds per inch kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's, I mean, glass has lead in it. There's other, they were talking about a myriad of other things that are potentially harmful. We're not eating asbestos. We're, we're, these are for display. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't eat off of them probably just because old things, you really don't know what's in them anymore. Yeah. I probably wouldn't eat off of a lot of like dollar store dishes either because they come from places that probably have lead paint mm. in them. So fair enough. Fair enough. But all are... that said, I do have some awesome uranium glass to yeah, sell. Yeah, they're, they're super cool to collect and to put a black light on and watch them light up and glow. Yeah, so this week I have a collection of various sizes of plates, which you can use sort of as, um, you know, like chargers or put something else on top of it and then put the light underneath it and then the whole thing will kind of glow. It's fun to put other pieces of glass on top of it. You actually might be surprised at what other things glow once you put a black light on them. It's not strictly green glass that glows. I have some yellow glass that glows red and, you know, Start, you don't want to take a black light to everything. That's also that's, a, that's another bad road to go down. Like that could be a whole other yes. TV show. I think Gordon Ramsay did that already, yeah, where he went to different hotels. Show. But you know, long windedly, that is to say, I have some plates for sale. Three different plates. We'll put them up in our Etsy shop. There'll be a photo of those. If you click on the photo in the show notes at strangefamiliars.com, it'll take you to our Etsy shop, where you can purchase those plates or other curiosities of the week. At Etsy, we have copies of my artwork, originals, and prints. We've got copies of my books. All my books are available there. If you get them from us on Etsy, they come signed by me. You don't even have to ask. Strange Familiars t-shirts, stickers, patches, and more. Our Etsy shop name is Lost Grave. But if you type in Strange Familiars, guess what? That works. Our stuff comes up. Shopping at our Etsy shop helps support the show helps us continue to make new content for you. While you're on Etsy, check out Chad Shop, Ruck Rabbit Outdoors, and our friends at Karmic Garden as well. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll be back soon with more Strange Familiars. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts, music, books, art, podcasts, and more. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. If you want to hear more or purchase music, you can go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com. Strange Familiars is on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars, where you can join the Strange Familiars Gathering Group. And we're on Instagram, at strangefamiliars, one word. Please give us a follow. And you can find us on the web, always at strangefamiliars.com.
out of sight.